I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, once again, welcome everyone to the July Buffalo Tableau User Group meeting. We're happy to have you here. Um, just a couple housekeeping notes. We will be recording this meeting and it will be posted on the Tableau YouTube channel. Uh, we will also post um, this meeting as well as the last one on our Tableau community page. Um, I'll send a reminder out after the meeting too to uh, make sure you join the community page. Um, we're gonna try to start using that more to post updates. Um, we also have our uh, LinkedIn group, which many of you are members of. So there's a couple different ways to keep in touch with the Tableau user group and I'll just send out reminders uh, regarding those. So, um, okay. All right, um, our next speaker is Scott Eaton, who's a data visualization manager at JP Morgan Chase. Um, Scott is going to present on dashboard documentation standards. Um, Scott is a uh, data viz prof professional who has over 16 years experience in creating dashboards and scorecards. Um, he's presented at the Oracle Developer Tools User Group, K-Scope Conference. He was a finalist um, for the Oracle Developer User Group's Editor's Choice Award. Um, he's also written a number of uh, technical articles. Um, Scott received his Tableau Desktop certif Certified Associate Certificate in October of 2017. Um, in his personal time, he's an avid gamer, gamer, movie watcher, and as you can tell from his background, a diehard <laughs> Cleveland Browns fan. Uh, so without further ado, Scott Eaton. Thanks for that uh, wonderful introduction here. Appreciate that. Um, sure. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. All right, everybody see my screen okay? Uh, looks great. All right, um, thanks guys. Uh, appreciate the chance to be able to talk about this today. Um, this is one of my passions. Like I said, like you mentioned, I've been doing this for uh, 16, 17 years now, pretty much uh, all but one year of my career I've been doing this. Um, and as is with most things, Sometimes the things you hate the worst is the thing you become the best at, <laughs> um, or at least I, th I think I'm pretty good at it. Um, it is a necessary evil, but with with the, with documenting your dashboard, it, it's it's very crucial, um, especially when it comes to trying to go back and when you're taking over something from somebody. Um, or just temporary supporting them, having that documentation is crucial. Um, so little disclaimer I like to put out here. Um, this presentation is based on my own experiences of what has worked well on teams that I've been on. Um, it definitely should not be considered definitive, but just as an example of a starting point for creating a documentation template. Um, I've been on numerous teams throughout my career excuse me, and this template has kind of morphed as I've taken it from each team. Um, it just all depends on how much detail you wanna put into it um, and, and how technical you wanna get with it. Um, again, as, as he mentioned, um, I work for JP Morgan Chase. I'm currently part of the um, Human Resources Chief Data and Analytics Office dashboarding team. Um, I do dashboards. I lead some of our junior developers. Um, I am the steward and manage our team's dashboard design and documentation standards. And I also manage the security of all of our, our, da of, of our dashboard environment. Um, so I'm kind of a jack of all trades as it comes to that. Um, and I have been doing this for about 16 years and I've worked it with Tableau for the last eight and a half, nine years. I started in Tableau with version seven, if that shows you how far back it goes. 
Um, things we're going to cover today. Um, first, we're going to cover the why you want to document your dashboard. Um, two, two things that have come up as I've gone through this is one for audit purposes and also to avoid ex an excessive amount of time and having to reverse engineer and review a dashboard. Um, next, we'll go into how do you document it? Um, what tool do you want to do the documentation in? And then finally, what should be in your template? Um, now, again, this has changed over, over the teams I have. Um, right now I've got, there's, uh, what's that, uh, not, about 10 or 11 sections in here. But again, you can add to or remove as your needs, um, as the needs arise for your team. So first, why should you document your dashboard? Um, I fully admit, like I said, creating documentation is one of the worst parts of my job in any role that I've had. Um, but when you when it comes to documenting it, it is a necessary evil that will save you or someone else's time in the future. Um, the two main reasons you want to document um, for audits and decreased time in reverse engineering. Um, so for audit purposes, as a as an employee of a bank, there is constant audit processes that um, go forward no matter what role you're in or what line of business you're in. Um, and even just outside of a bank, most companies have some processes where there, where audits are conducted. Um, and you're normally wanting to see documentation as part of that process. So it's a good idea to do it up front rather than wait until a failed audit to complete it to where you have to do it. So the more you can do up front, the better it's going to be to where potentially you could have that audit process just kind of go through the motions um, and then you've got everything in place you need. Um, decreased time in reverse engineering. This is something I've experienced many times throughout my uh, career to where I've either um, a new role I've come in, I've picked up um, dashboards from the person that was in the role previously, or I've even just had to temporarily support um, a dashboard for somebody's on vacation. And sometimes, depending on the complexity of the dashboard, it can take me a week or more just to go back and review code, figure out what connects to what, the, the functionality. I'm able to take a week just to figure out how something that's working to, to just to figure out how to fix the problem. Um, so again, you may either be temporarily supporting a dashboard due to a coworker being out on leave or having something transition to you without proper documentation, depending on the complexity, it could take you a considerable amount of time for me. In some cases it took a week. Um, I know uh, of some of my other previous colleagues where it took them longer than that. Um, and that's just to get a basic understanding of what's going on behind the scenes of the dashboard. By having the documentation, you can cut that time frame drastically um, to where maybe it'll only take you an hour to go through it or, uh, or even a day. How do you document your dashboard? Um, the tool used to document your dashboard is pretty simple. Any word processing software you want to use should work. Um, you just want to make sure the following that that software tool is easily accessible and easy to use. Um, I do all, all mine in Microsoft Word, but you could do it on any word processing tool. Um, make sure you have a table of contents in the document. Um, you can either use um, a table of contents page um, or what I've done in my documents is instead of having page numbers listed, I have the sections of the document listed at, as links in the top of the document. So that way, if you click on a link, it'll take you to that point in the document um, by setting bookmarks um, in the Word document itself. Um, so that way you have easily, you have easy access to that specific section of the document. Um, make sure you're using a standard font type and size. Um, what I use in, in mine is uh, Calibre Times New Roman or Arial. And then standard font size is about 12 point for main text and 14 point for section headings. And then once complete, determine who your audience of the document is going to be, whether it's going to be just your team, are you going to open it up for users to look at, other technical teams, and then just make sure you have it saved in a location that's easily accessible to that audience. Um, I have looked and tried many times to find a way to automate this process, 
um, to see if there's third party automation tools out there that do this. Um, there were a few, um, but they didn't fully capture everything that's captured in here. Um, so at, at the time, um, I, I, I personally, my opinion is there's not really a good um, tool out there to do this. So this for me is an entirely 100% manual process. Um, now again, how long it takes um, to document this. I've had dashboards that have taken me um, an hour to document. I've also had dashboards, depending on the amount of stuff in there that have taken me a week to document just because of the amount of calculated fields that are in there, the amount of, of filters and just things that you have to put in as we go through here. Um, and again, it's been streamlined along the way to where um, that time has been cut down a little bit based on some stuff that we feel needs to be in there and so, some things that you can actually kind of put off in another tool you're using. And I'll, I'll kind of describe that once we get to that particular section. All right, what should be in your template? Um, currently, these are the 11 sections that I have in the template that I use. Um, we start with a revision history. So you wanna definitely make sure you're keeping track of how many different revisions uh, you're doing as you're going through your different versions of the dashboard that the documentation is related to. You wanna make sure you have a summary detail section that's gonna have all your high level information such as business owners, developers, refresh frequencies, et cetera. Um, access roles, so information on the security setup of your dashboard. So that, that could include, okay, what um, is it global access? What um, we use active directory groups to access our dashboard. So we list out here. Um, one of one or two things, you can either list out the groups you have tied to it or provide a link to where you have that document at um, in a, a shared drive somewhere. Uh, purpose of the report. So this is just a, a brief description of the dashboard that could be one sentence or it could be a paragraph. Um, data sources. So what are your data sources you're using in the dashboard? Uh, report illustration, just some screenshots of the dashboard. So they can just go to your document here to kind of get a, a idea of the look and feel of your dashboard without having to go to the dashboard itself. Um, available filters. So these are the filters available for your users to use in the dashboard. So quick filters. Um, these can be global, page specific, or view specific. Uh, predefined filters. So these are the filters that you're not making available to the users. So stuff you're filtering behind the scenes. Um, but are you? But they are usually global across the entire dashboard. Uh, parameter sets. So what parameters or sets are you using in the dashboard um, that allow the user to change the dimensionality of the data as well as the view as well as any view swapping you're doing. Um, listing out your calculated fields. So this is kind of going to be kind of the crux of your documentation. So you have these calculated fields laid out. So anybody who's looking at this can understand the complexities behind some of these calculations that, that you're doing on the Tableau side of things. Um, and then your actual fields and the data source that you're pulling. So just these straight database fields that you're pulling out of the, the data source itself. So your revision history um, should be at the top of your document. So you can easily determine how many revisions you have done and whether they were major or minor. Um, information should be listed in a table and you should try to have the, the following columns in here. Um, name, so name of the person that did the revision. Uh, what version of the document is it? Um, and this should include major and minor versions. Now, what constitutes a major and minor version is gonna be based on the standard set by you or your team. Because um, what may be a major version to some, to one team may be just a minor version to another. Um, date of the revision and description. Definitely have in there what you modified in the document. Um, what we normally put in ours is just, we list the sections that were modified and what was modified in those sections. Um, and then what I would do is I would save each version. I would save that, save off each version separately. So that way, if there's any, any point in time that you want to be able to go back and, and potentially check something that was removed, you'll have the version, the, the last version that it was in. So you could go back and do that review. Uh, your summary details. This is going to be the next section. This is going to have all your high level business and developer information. 
related to the dashboard. And these are the, the, the items that we have in our summary detail section. So we're gonna have a report name. So basically what's the business name of your dashboard, who the business owner is. So that's gonna be the contact name, business function, what line of business um, is that business owner a part of? Uh, who's the report owner? Um, who owns the dashboard on the, on the technology side of things? Uh, who's the report developer? So if you have any questions related to um, the dashboard, you can either go to the report owner or the report developer. Um, ticket number, we put this in here. We use JIRA as our system um, to kind of track our, our book of work. So we've actually put our, the JIRA ticket number in here and this is good for audit purposes as well. So that way we can tie the dashboard back to a system of record that it was input into as far as our book of work goes. Um, frequency, so how frequently are you refreshing the dashboard? This can be different than the data source refresh. Um, as we all know in Tableau, you can have workbook refreshes, you can have data source refreshes, and you can also have refreshes just on the database tables themselves. So this is just specifically what is the refresh of the dashboard itself. Uh, production go live, so what's the date that the dashboard went live in the production environment? just so you kind of have a kicking off point that you know of, okay, when you're trying to look at um, inception and just kind of acceptance testing um, and adoption and all that, you can start from that go live and, and start tracking things from there. Uh, data source name. So this is just going to list the names of the data sources that are being used in there. Could be one, could be five. Just basically list out the data sources. What's the, um, the report URL? So what's the production link of the dashboard? So what is the link on either Tableau server or in the case of, of our dashboards, we have them embedded in a portal. So we would put the actual portal link in here um, that would get you out to the dashboard. And then your documentation URL. So link to where all your documentation related to this dashboard is being stored. Um, and that may not just be um, the URL to this document itself, but all the documentation that is related to the dashboard as far as maybe business requirements document, UAT testing documents, things like that. So what is that URL where you're keeping all the, the, the documentation? Next, access roles and your purpose of the report. Um, for the access role section, that's gonna contain all the information related to how your security is set up on your dashboard. Um, do not list your user list there. <laughs> that, that just becomes feasible, especially like for me, um, we've got some dashboards that have 700 users and we actually have one dashboard, which is our manager dashboard that has 40,000 managers in it. So it's not just feasible to list all your users in there. Um, this section is gonna be used to display data on the groups that the users are in. And you can do one of two things. You can either list those roles that have access to the dashboard there or provide a link to a document that has all your roles listed, um, a description of those roles and what dashboard they were aligned to. Um, and the approvers of those roles should be listed um, in that section as well. If you're gonna list the, the actual AD group names, make sure you list the approvers. Or in the case that we're doing, I have a um, Excel spreadsheet I maintain that lists all of our AD groups. And we've got about, I'd say 10 or 11 dashboards and about 70 groups. Um, one of those dashboards actually has about 60 groups tied to it. Um, but in that document, um, I have a tab, which, okay, here's a list of all of our groups in from our developer group to our tester groups, to our user groups, um, who the approvers are for those groups, a description of what those are. And then I have another tab that lists out all of our productionalized dashboards and what groups are mapped to those. Just for, for ease of use, in case anybody has any questions as to what groups you're using when, um, you can just go out to the document and, and be able to see that. So for the access role section, we just put the link to that document on our share drive in that document. Uh, purpose of the report. This is just going to be a description of your dashboard. This can be a few sentences or an entire paragraph. Um, and it should describe what problem the dashboard is trying to solve for and who the user base is. All right, data source section. This is where 
it can kind of get um, a little muddy and too detailed. And I just found this out recently talking with my own management to where we're going to try to scale this back a little bit. Um, some of this stuff, um, we use Alteryx to generate most of our data sources. And we're going to try to do some of this um, commenting and documenting and put that on the Alteryx side of stuff to where we can just maybe attach or embed the Alteryx workflow to get some of this information to where we don't have to list it all out. Because this can, this can be a time... This can be one of the time consuming sections of the dashboard if you want to have all these sections in there. Um, but the way it's situated right now, this is where we're gonna list out all your relevant information related to the data sources using our dashboard. If it has multiple data sources, then I would subsection in this area for each new data source. So let's say you've got a, let's say HR info is your data source. So you'd have HR info subsection, then all this information. And then let's say you've got um, sales information, then okay, here's your sales data source and there's all the data source information related to that. So basically for each data source, you're gonna wanna list, okay, what's your data source name? <coughs> oh, excuse me. So what's the name of the data source being used? Data source description, so excuse me. Um, what is the, what, what's the data contained in the data source? Is it calendar data? Is it sales information? Is it HR information? So basically that, that's what you want to put for the description. Date range. So what's the um, time frame of your data? Is it one year, two years, six months? So what's your kind of range, range and span of data here? Refresh schedule. So how often is the data refresh? So this is where I mentioned earlier, your data source refresh could be different than your dashboard refresh. Um, so just kind of call out in here, when is your data source being refreshed? Um, database, so if your data, um, if your, your data is coming from a database, okay, this is gonna be what database is it coming from? Oracle, SQL Server, um, Hadoop. Or if it's a, a, a file like an Excel spreadsheet, okay, then List the, okay, what, what's the file that your data source is um, connecting to? Queries, if you're using custom SQL, this is where I would, where I have just embedded, I've taken the custom SQL, pulled it out of Tableau, pasted it into a text document and just embedded it in this section. So that way anybody looking at this can go in, just double click on the document and see the query that's being run on the Tableau side. Um, and again, normally it's just a text document that's going to be embedded right there. Um, schema, if you're pulling the data from the database, okay, what's the schema that the data is coming from? Tables, what are the tables that you're pulling the data from? And then with that information, um, you're going to have a little subsection in there where you're going to want to list, okay, what's the name of the table? Give me a description of the data being stored in that table. Again, is it calendar data? Is it sales data? So on. And what's the refresh schedule of that table? Because as we all know, database tables have, you could have daily refreshes, you could have multi-day refreshes. Um, so basically listing out table, description, and refresh schedule and listing all the tables that you're using in this section. And then the joins here. And this is where, yeah, before I listen out with the joins, but it, let's say you're doing this in Alteryx, you could probably eliminate um, this tables and this join section to where if you just embedded the Alteryx workflow in the document itself, you can then just go in there and just reviewing the workflow, be able to say, okay, here's all the tables being used. Here's all the input data sources. Here's the joints between everything and be able to do it that way. But if you don't, if you're not going to go that route, then I would say have another section on here for joins where you're going to say, okay, here's the, the, here's the name of the tables being joined. Here's the actual join that's being done and what's the description of the join. So again, add, you can add to this or take away sections as it meets the needs of your team. Report illustration and available filters. Um, report illustration, this is just the section where you're going to embed screenshots of each tab of your dashboard. Um, this is going to allow the person that's viewing your document to not have to go out to where the dashboard is on the server to see it. Let's say they're, they're new to the organization and they just don't have um, permission yet 
to be able to go out and see the dashboard so they can just pull up the document and be able to, to see what the dashboard looks like that way. Um, available filters. This is where you're going to have a list of all the filters you're making available for the users to filter the dashboard by. If you have filters that are just specific to certain tabs or views, then what I would do is I would create subsections. So I would basically have a global section where, okay, here's all your global filters. Then I would break it down global, then I would break it down to um, certain tabs and then certain views. And then just specify in each one there, um, have it set up the same way you do the data source section with the subsections. And then make sure if it's not self-explanatory what the filter is that it's filtering on based on the name, then you just provide a description. A lot of times when I'm creating my names for um, dimensions and measures and things, I will give it a, a very descriptive English name, just so based on the name, you can tell what, what it's doing or what it's filtering by. But if for some reason, you're not able to do that based on naming standards or conventions, then just make sure you have a, a description of, of what that filter is. Uh, predefined filters. This section is going to list out all the global filters that are using that you are not making available for the users to filter by. So anything, let's say you don't want, let's say you just want to show um, United States data or something like that, but you don't want to give the user an option to be able to filter by that. That is an example of something that would go on a predefined filter or any like row level security things that you're doing to basically, based on the user that's coming in, they only should see this, this certain data. Um, again, filtering you were doing on the data source beforehand, such as applying new row level security based on the logged in user or just some static filtering behind the scenes. Um, parameters and sets. So this section is going to list any parameters or sets that are being used in the dashboard um, that allows the users to dynamically alter calculations or thresholds. Um, this should be listed in a table um, with the following columns that you put in there. So what is the parameter or the set? So what's the name of that parameter or set? What's the data type? So what type of data is the parameter set? Is it a string? Is it a float? Is it a date, is it a integer, something like that. Description of what that parameter is used for. So is it a parameter used to set a threshold? Is it a parameter used to do sheet swapping? Um, something like that. And if there is a default value, what is that in, What is that default value for the parameter or the set? All right, um, next section, calculated fields. This to me, when I've done my documentation has always been the biggest part of, of doing this document. Um, and it could be to where you have very little calculated fields or you could have a lot. Um, I had a dashboard that I created uh, about two years ago where there was um, around 200 calculated fields that I had to go in and document. Um, a lot of it is pretty easy um to do um to, to get all this information in there it just becomes tedious because you're just doing repetitive stuff over and over again um with, with how you go about getting the code in so again this is going to list all your calculations that are in the data source if you have multiple data sources definitely break it down by those data sources so you can see the the calculated fields that are related to each data source um, and what you want to have in there is, is a table with the following. You want to have your field name. So what's the name of your calculation? Is it a dimension or a measure? Because um, uh, some can be classified as both. So it's, it's kind of good to, to have it in there, whether it's a dimension or a measure. What's the data type again? Is it a string, float, date, et cetera? What's the calculation code? Um, now you can do this one of two ways. You can either enter it in your own words, um, put it kind of in plain text, or can be based on, be passed from the tool the dashboard was created in. So in relation to Tableau here, what I, what I do most of the time is I will just go in, um, edit, uh, go into the actual um, calculation itself, hit, hit edit, and I will just literally copy the code that's in there and paste it into the document, um, at least for my team, because all the developers on my team are very fluent in, in Tableau and understand Tableau terminology and code. 
So there's no need to put it in plain, plain text, just pick up, basically pick up and drop the code in. Um, now, if you have users looking at this, um, then yeah, you might want to put that in more plain English terms. But literally for us, it's just picking up the code and dropping it in there. And then um, a description, again, if it's not self-explanatory based on the field name, what that field is, then I would recommend you put a definition in there um, just to make sure you notate what, what that is for somebody who's not going to be able to understand that. Uh, fields in your data source then. Um, this is going to list all the fields that are being pulled directly from the data source, whether it's from the database, excuse me, or the file that you're pulling it from. Again, if there's multiple data sources, subsection them off based on the data source name so you know these fields are part of this data source. And again, very similar to your calculated fields, you're going to list your field name. Um, is it a dimension or a measure? What's the data type? Um, and then for stuff that's coming from the actual database, what's the actual physical database table? And then what's the actual physical database column that that data is coming from? So that way if you run into any issues where there's data not coming through, there's wrong data, not, not, there's wrong data coming through, or there's no data in there at all, you actually know what the actual physical database table and column is. Um, as long as you have access or you can give that to somebody who would have access to be able to check for you. And then again, a description of the field. If it's not self-explanatory by the name, what that, what the data for that field is. Um, so in summary, um, you may not like to do documentation, but it is a necessary evil that does need to be done. <clears throat> um, it may take some time depending on the complexity of the dashboard, but in the end, um, it will save you time and frustration in the understanding of a dashboard. Um, <clears throat> then it is worth, and it is worth the investment in the long run. Um, so just to kind of quickly recap what we went through, we talked about um, why you should do the dashboard relating to audit purposes and just cutting down um, time it takes to reverse engineer how to document your dashboard, what tools to use and, and things like that. And then what should be in your uh, template with the, the, the sections that I've listed there. So with that, I thank you guys for your time and I will open it up to questions. Okay. Thanks so much, Scott. Um, as I mentioned earlier, if anyone has questions, please use the Q and A function um, in Zoom. I, I've got a couple questions, Scott, if, if you don't mind. Um, I think that was great. I, I think it's something, you know, I, I've certainly struggled with many times you're trying to put together a dashboard very quickly to answer, you know, some sort of question for a senior manager and just don't have time to, to document. And then you go back six months later and cannot <laughs> figure out how, how anything works. So I think it's very helpful to, to incorporate uh, many of the of these principles. Um, just a basic question. You said you do most of your documentation in Microsoft Word. Um, have you ever played around with documenting right in a dashboard, like using a page that just has like a big text box in it or anything like that or any other techniques that maybe you've tried to incorporate that the documentation right in the dashboard? Not, not to the extent of what's in this document. Some of our dashboards do have a glossary page mm -hmm. um, for, to just for definitions of, of terms that may not be familiar in the dashboard. Um, but for us, it doesn't make sense to have the documentation in the dashboard itself because again, this is open to our users and they're, got, they're not gonna know the they're not going to be familiar with the technicalities and everything that, that I mentioned in, in the template here. So it doesn't really make sense to do that in there. Um, if it was, if it was a dashboard strictly for um, our team, I'm sure I could, I would be able to maybe create a dashboard that, that would document all of our stuff that that's just not something that's come up yet. Um, but again, I've just found the easiest way to do it is just put it in, put it in word and, um, and yeah, like I mentioned, it can be time consuming depending on 
how many calculated fields you have in there, how many data sources and things you do need to document. It's, it's more tedious than anything. I, I haven't found any really difficulty in doing it. It's just like I mentioned the, the one I did where I had 200 calculated fields that I had to, to just basically copy paste, copy paste and, and just do that quite a bit. Um, it, it just gets to, to be tedious, but um, so, so yeah, there's no, no, I really, I just haven't found a business case to yet to where we, we couldn't, we could do documentation of the dashboard itself. Right. Um, and then the second question I had was, you know, in contrast to what Josh spoke about earlier in the meeting, you know, t Tableau being able to provide one source of truth for numbers and whatnot. I, I think, you know, uh, on the contrary, Tableau also, you know, opens up so many possibilities, right, with using sets, parameters, actions, filters, whatever, where you can really, you know, dr drill down or di get different versions of numbers. Um, have you ever found where, you know, maybe your that documentation has caught a, maybe let's say like a calculation error that could possibly give a wrong number or, you know, it, is it really possible to document like every version of what a calculation could give you? I don't know if that was the clearest question, but. Yeah, yeah. I understand what you're saying. To, to kind of answer the, the first question, there have been times where I've gone through and I've thought, okay, we've tested the dashboard. Because a lot of times when I do the documentation, um, I'm trying to get a much, as much of it done ahead of time as possible. I don't want to wait till the very end. Um, like, like normally one of our standards was okay. You, and we haven't fully implemented this yet. We're trying to get back to some of this, but one of the standards we're trying to put in place was okay. You need to have documentation out there within two weeks of it going live. Um, now a lot of times, and what I would recommend is do this as you go through the development process. Cause some of the stuff you can fill in as you go with, the, with there being minimal tweaking that you have to do later. Um, but with that being said, I've, I've, I've gone through, I've documented calculated fields. Um, and I've actually caught some, some errors in, that haven't been apparent when I've actually looked at the code through Tableau itself. But when I've taken that code, copied it and put it into Word, mm -hmm. something just stands out based on the way that the, the formatting or the font, font is. And I've actually caught, caught an error there that I've gone back and corrected. Um, so so it, it, does, it can help with that standpoint. Um, there's also, and we've, we've, uh, I've gotten detailed like this to where, yeah, if there's maybe slight variations of, of the same code, like, like the 200 calculations I did, um, where I had to document, um, some of them were basically the exact same line of code, like there were five lines of code and four of those lines were exactly the same, but the only thing that changed was one of the, the, the filtering parts of the if statement but we still put it in there and documented. So that's where I started having my conversation with my manager about, um, and, and we agreed on that maybe kind of breaking that down or, or pulling that, that back a little bit to where, okay, let's maybe document just the core code. Mm -hmm. So the code that you know is going to be the same across everything. And then just maybe making a note of what could potentially change to where, okay, okay, here's the four lines of code that are always gonna stay the same, but this line of code will vary based on what, let's say region you're trying to filter on or city or something like that. Cool. Uh, we did get one question in the, the Q&A function. Uh, Stephanie Strubel asked, do you recommend a review of the dashboard documentation, for example, annually um, to ensure that the user audience is, user slash audience is still using it as designed and she thanks you for your presentation thank you stephanie appreciate that um not so much a review of the documentation um but this is another thing that, that we're doing on my team um that i've had a hand in as well we've created a a product adoption dashboard to where um, we have here at the bank um our ta a tableau center of excellence and they they pump out usage metrics. Um, they, they have a generic dashboard where we can go look at, look and see usage metrics of who's logging in, when they're logging in, how often they're logging in and so on. 
their, their dashboard is very basic. So we created our own dashboard to track that information. Now they are, we've enlisted them and they are dropping us that same usage file for us to use as a data source that we're consuming. We're joining that into our HR information, which they don't do. So they, they, they don't break down their information by line of business or region or anything like that. Um, we can do that by um, accessing the HR information we have. So we take their usage information joined it into our employee data. And we've created a, what we call a, a product usage dashboard, which we can, based on all the dashboards we have, we can see, okay, how many users are accessing the dashboard? What views they're looking at? How many views? What's the average logins? Um, things like that. And that's become really key for us for product adoption in the, to look at in the first month or two um of when we have something go out and that's something we're going to be using on a regular basis that, that's not just something we're going to look at every like six months or, or every quarter that's something that's looked at daily especially because we have what we call our manager dashboard which is a key part of of one of the, which is a, which is, a key, which is a, a key dashboard for our bank um, that provides um access for our managers to look at um time and away stuff, vacation stuff, um, diversity information, things like that. Um, so, and we need to be able to see, okay, who's using the dashboard um, and, and who's not, and be able to kind of gear messages around that. Great. Okay. Uh, well, we are right at four o'clock here. So once again, thank you both Josh and Scott. I thought that it was a really good user group meeting. Um, as I mentioned, for, for those who were here right at the start of the meeting, uh, we're going to try again to get the, um, the, the meeting's been recorded. Uh, I think Tableau will automatically post it on their YouTube channel, uh, but I will uh, send either an email or a post out through the, the user group forum uh, with the the links to the video, um, please share with your friends or if you know of anyone who, who could an attend or whatnot. Um, also just another plug um, to make sure you're signed up on our LinkedIn group on the uh, user group page as well. Again, I'll, I'll send all that information out. Those are probably the two of the best ways to communicate with us. And uh, thank you all for attending. We'll get another one uh, scheduled here in a couple months. So again, appreciate it, Scott and Josh and everyone have a great 